Hello everyone, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about burnout as a chemical engineer at UC Berkeley. And what I mean by burnout is going through an episode where, you know, it feels like your heart's not in it and you're not sure why you're doing this. And, you know, it can happen at any point, like, especially near the end when you're just like, you know, what am I doing? Why am I doing any of this stuff? And it's definitely very challenging. And what I wanted to do is, is talk about you know, my experience at Berkeley doing chemical engineering and I'll talk about the low points, but not, I don't want that to be like in a negative light. I want it to be a way of looking at how different the lows are from the highs. And um, so that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so the first semester uh, for me at UC Berkeley was in my junior year. So I did not get accepted to UC Berkeley out of the gate from high school. I applied as a biology major, um, and that's when I went to junior college, and I decided to say that I was gonna major in engineering, uh, chemical engineering, because my buddy was doing that, and so uh, I wanted to take classes with him, and that was my rationale for doing chemical engineering in the first place. Uh, and so, you know, I, I can't say I, I necessarily foresaw everything that that meant. I had very little understanding of what chemical engineering even was when I said that I was going to do it. But, you know, the reality of the situation is that as a transfer student coming in from a junior college, um, you need to be very explicit and precise about what you're going to do. So in my case, I knew I wanted to go to UC Berkeley and I said I was going to do chemical engineering. And so I did my first and second year at my junior college doing all the general ed classes and some engineering specific classes uh, and some organic chemistry that I really enjoyed doing. Um, but yeah, so basically uh, for me, I, I managed to get accepted as a transfer student from Santa Rosa Junior College to UC Berkeley. And that's when I took my first class. Uh, it was CBE 140. And um, that was the upper div introduction to chemical engineering. And I remember the professors of that class. And I remember how I felt the night after we took our final exam. So our final in that class was end of the fall semester. So this was December of 2016. And I remember coming home to my aunt and my uncle and I was crying because I, I was telling them that I was very sure that, you know, I, I failed. Um, you know, I, I was so confident that I didn't do well enough on that exam. And I felt like a fish out of water. I felt like I was surrounded by people who were so much smarter and better than I was. And, you know, the exam that I took just made me feel like I didn't know anything. Um, and so I, I was, I, I was basically apologizing to them for wasting their time. Um, you know, I felt really bad and that was definitely a low point for me, um, in terms of my undergrad, because I genuinely thought I wasn't good enough and I didn't pass. And, you know, I was, I, I don't really look at my grades, honestly. Um, I just give it my best and if that passes, great. Uh, if it doesn't, well, darn, you know, I gave it my best. Hopefully I can figure out what I need to improve on, but I, I, I don't look at the numbers um, because it doesn't help me um, personally. I know there's a lot of kids, when I was at Berkeley, there was a ton of kids who would get so fixated on, did I get an 88 or an 89 or, a, you know, a 72 or a 74? And it's like, it makes no difference to me because I didn't really care that much about my GPA, but a lot of kids did. And so... You know, you can dedicate a bunch of mental resources and stress into worrying about the difference between a 74 and a 75, um, or you can just try to focus on studying and just doing your best and making sure that you're doing other stuff besides studying that keeps you mentally sane. Um, but, you know, for me, that was definitely a low point. And I was, you know, in my head, I was envisioning, you know, what the next week would look like of, you know, you failed, uh, better luck next time it's going to be really expensive because you're going to have to retake all this stuff. And, um, you know, those are definitely dark days. Uh, and I, I, you know, I remember it well. <laughs> um, and, you know, it turned out I actually didn't fail. Um, you know, I, uh, 
I, I passed. I, I didn't get the best grades, but I passed. And um, I was honestly kind of surprised by that. Uh, and, and another memory I have from Berkeley is literally the first day of, of school. I was right after class, I was, you know, getting to know some of my classmates. One of them is like one of my best friends. Uh, and, and I just remember we were talking about like, <laughs> you know, what, what it's going to be like, cause we're going to drop out or we're going to change major. Cause this is all just way too hard and way too insane. Cause like the first day of classes, uh, and the first class we took was just, it, it was an immense amount of new stuff of challenging stuff of these equations that looked like Greek, you know, it's just like, it, it made no sense. And, um, you know, we're all just looking at it and we're like, geez, you know, we're not, this isn't for us. We can't do this. You know, that was the sentiment we had. Um, and we, and, and that's a sentiment that I maintained, uh, throughout that class, um, up until the end. And then somehow I ended up passing and, you know, that's, I think where my belief is that like, if I just do my best, I don't have to worry because I can at least rest easy at night knowing that like I did my best and it's okay if my best isn't good enough. I'm still trying to tell that to myself today, but like, if you know that you gave it your best, that's all that really matters here. It doesn't matter if you passed or not, because that's just numbers and that's just social constructs. The important thing for you and yourself is to know that, you know, you did your best and it's okay if you fail. It's okay to fail. And um, so in terms of, of burnout, like I, I really felt like if, you know, if, if I didn't get through that class at Berkeley, if I didn't pass it, I was like, you know, this is it. Like, I'm, I, I was sure like I, that I didn't do well enough to pass it. Um, so it was honestly kind of a surprise. And so that was one low point. Um, in terms of like how the next year went of classes, uh, I'm not gonna say the classes were necessarily easier, but you know, like any kind of schooling, I think you begin to learn what your strategies are, what your methods are. Um, to understand the material, to practice the material, to prep for tests. Um, and so, you know, you just really learn what works and you find good study groups. And, you know, for me, what really saved my life at Berkeley was just having a good uh, study partner that really saved me a lot. Uh, Brandon, I really appreciate you. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that was huge having a having a study buddy um and i also remember the last day of classes at berkeley too and this is one of the highs of i i remember when when on graduation day i was talking to, to my classmates and so many of them seemed so tired and exhausted and relieved that they didn't have to do this anymore <laughs> You know, and I felt entirely the opposite. I I enjoyed the classes that I was in. I enjoyed the projects that we were doing. I enjoyed working on teams with these other people who are really smart and talented. And we all brought our own flavors to the table in terms of, you know, making the sum greater than the, the whole greater than the sum of its parts. And so... Um, you know, I miss it and I missed it. And I, you know, when I was writing up Euclid and I was looking back and I was seeing Campanile, it really hit me that like, you know, I'm gonna miss this. I actually will, like, and I didn't think I would. Like, if you asked me that first semester, that first week, I was like, hell no, man, I'm not gonna miss this. This is way too stressful, this is way too ugly. And, um, you know, over the years, like I worked uh, in the private sector for about three years after I graduated. Um, I really kind of just came to see chemical engineering as this thing that gave me a solid foundation for, you know, not necessarily solving an engineering problem, like how big of a heat exchanger we're gonna need or what's the best type of reactor to use for this second order reaction. Um, like that, I, I don't need to know that info, but it's more just the, what do you do when you're given this new problem statement and you don't know what to do? And you need to figure out, you know, what assumptions can you make? Uh, what stakeholders should you involve? How can you make sure this thing is as safe and efficient as possible? How do you make sure it's even cost effective? Where's the business value in any of this? Um, and so product design development, um, you know, and, and 
solving really challenging, complicated problems is something that like I, I enjoy doing. I think it's fun. Um, and I know not everyone's gonna find it fun. And that's the reason why not everyone should be engineers. Um, but you know, that's, that's, uh, that's how I, I really feel in my heart. Like I, and I know it just in hindsight from all these years later that like, I'm glad I did that. Like, I don't have a regret. Like, I don't feel like, Ooh, you know, I really shouldn't have done that. Um, you know, I might've said that in the, you know, on the day after that first final, um, definitely probably would have said that, like, it's just a huge waste. Um, but in hindsight, I'll, I'll tell you it wasn't. And so I know I'm being very, seeing all over the place right now, but I, I just, in terms of, you know, there, there were other lows too along the way that I'm not going into right now, but you know, in terms of, for me, I think one of the biggest things to recognize that when you're in a low is to tell yourself that you're in a low. This is a rough spot and to just acknowledge that and to be like, you know, it's okay that you feel bad right now. Like your feelings are valid. That's, I think one of the most important things to do when you feel bad is just acknowledge your feelings and to not say like immediately, you know, jump into the blame game, blame yourself, blame the teacher, blame the school. Uh, you know, there is a lot of that at Berkeley. Like a lot of kids just feel cheated. They hate the program. They hate how little support they get. They hate how tough the exams are. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot to hate, but, um, you know, that's not productive use of your energy. You know, if, if you've only got so much time and energy on this planet, like try to put that to something positive. Like, you know, for me, the way I look at engineering today, the chemical engineering today is it's how do we create a system or a process to support society? And that's a very broad challenge or, or goal to do. And so like waste treatment is one example. Like I live in LA now, we've got millions of people and there's a ton of waste and tons of wastewater that you need to process to make sure that we're able to maintain and support society. Like this is important work. If you don't do this, if this doesn't get done, society doesn't function, people will die. And so I don't think anyone can logically argue that the work of chemical engineers is important in society. And I'm not just speaking specifically about waste treatment. I'm talking about stuff like energy. Like, you know, even if it's not oil and gas, which is a huge part of chemical engineering, but even if it's not oil and gas, we've got biofuels, we've got, you know, refineries, we've got other things that chemical engineers play fundamentally critical roles in, in terms of the operation, maintenance and development of these systems that keep society functioning today. And we take grant, we take all this for granted because it happens so seamlessly because people do good work. Um, and we, we hear about it when it goes wrong. And so, um, you know, there, there is immense value of pursuing a career as a chemical engineer. And there's immense value in other careers too. I'm not saying it's just chemical engineering, but you know, I think if you're ever feeling bad about your decision to go into this field, it's really important to just note that, you know, these, it, it, you shouldn't feel bad about your decision to, if nothing else, to, to give this a shot and to try it out. And, um, you know, that, that's for me, one of the things that kind of really kept me going was just knowing that like on a, on a higher level, you know, as much as I may fail at figuring out the right sized heat exchanger to use for a chemical reactor that's exothermic, I can at least know that, you know, this, this isn't just useless number punching, crunching stuff. This is stuff that applies to the real world that people need to know how to do every day. And by understanding this level of detail, you can contribute to these types of decisions that get made as to you know, in developing developing parts of the world are great examples of where people are like, we're starting from scratch here. We need energy. Like, how are you going to provide the population in Rwanda with energy? You know, can you come up with some chemical factory that can make enough, uh, you know, MTBE for, for this, for all these people who need to switch over from coal? And, um, you know, these are all problems that Chemical engineers are right there on the ground level trying to solve and figure out. And so the work is meaningful. It is valuable. Society needs it. There's no disputing that. And I think if anyone disputes that, then I'll argue with them. Um, you know, and it needs to get done. And, and like a lot of other things in society, these things need to happen. Otherwise, society will fall apart. 
And so, um, you know, obviously the work's not always glamorous and sometimes you are literally sifting through shit, but that's, that's, that's what you do as a waste treatment engineer, you know, and someone needs to do it. And it's not just the, I'll say this too, cause I have almost taken jobs at waste treatment plants is it's not just the chemical engineers, you know, the stars of the show who design all this stuff. You've also got all these technicians and contractors who turn the bolts and actually install these systems and, you know, do a lot of the actual work. So, you know, it's many people involved to make these things happen and to provide value to society, to keep society functioning. And so, you know, in that regard, I just want to say, I think chemical engineering is a, it's a wonderful field. If, if you're interested in it and if you see yourself contributing to it, and even if you don't see yourself contributing to it, just know that it's like, it gives you a framework, a mental framework for how to approach, you know, challenges that life will throw at you, you know? And so I want to wrap things up with that, but you know, I, I hope that if, if you are a chemical engineer out there and you are struggling or feeling bad about you know, your decisions in these programs, like don't like it's, it's something that. You might not feel it right now, but I, I'll tell you this, like in the long run, you will look back and I, I genuinely believe that, you know, you will be glad that you've made these decisions, you know, and, and it's not just about money because if you just go down that rabbit hole of, I could have made more money if I majored in computer science, you know, I could have made more money if I did, you know, EECS, like there's, that's, that's not a path you want to go down. If all you do is look at how much money you can make, you know, go into Wall Street and finance and it's, yeah. So don't, you know, just, just really ask yourself if that aligns with your own personal values and career aspirations. Um, obviously we need to make some amount of money to survive, but hopefully we're making decisions that also align with other intrinsic values that we all have and hold dear to our hearts. So I'm going to wrap things up with that. I hope everyone out there is doing well. Let me know if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them too. And I'll talk to you guys next time.